podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. Okay, I want to thank the organizers for bringing us all here to Munich, and uh, of course for giving me an opportunity to tell you about my work. Uh, this will be a, a talk about the work uh, I've done with Comron, um, it, the, a paper about the, that, that appeared uh, this April, and some follow-up work that we are doing with mathematicians Tobias Eckholm and Len Yang. Um, whoops. Okay, so. Um, the story involves knot theory, and knot theory has been um, related to physics for a very long time, going, in fact, all the way back to the beginning of the 19th century, and Gauss's study of electromagnetism, uh, where Gauss has discovered the first knot invariant, the Gauss's linking number, which that discovery started uh, the whole subject of knot theory. The central question of that subject is, um, when are two knots distinct? Um, one approaches this question, by constructing knot invariants with the property that um, any two knots uh, with different invariants uh, are not deformable to each other. And um, in discovery of these knot invariants, quantum physics has played a central role. Now, as Witten explained in, in 1988, um, one of the best known knot invariants, the Jones polynomial, is computed by SV2 Transimus theory uh, on S3. Uh, the Jones polynomial is in fact, um, expectation value of the Wilson loop along the knot um, in fundamental representation of the gauge group. And uh, one gets more knot invariants by changing the representation and the gauge group. Now, um, to Simon's invariants, um, knot invariants taken all together are known to distinguish all knots. Well, sorry, I believe to distinguish all knots. There's no proof to, uh, to this fact. Uh, however, um, even if it's true, this is not very practical. Uh, there are infinitely many uh, invariants that you get this way that you would need to distinguish knots. And so the question that, that started the subject, when are two knots distinct, is still open. So um, what I'll tell you about in this talk is that um, topological string, uh, in a surprising way, gives you a new knot invariant, perhaps a very good one, using string duality. So what happens is this. To every knot, one can associate a Calabi-Yau manifold. A Calabi-Yau manifold given here by a hypersurface equation, or equivalently by a Riemann surface. These two equations encode the same amount of information. And the claim is that this Riemann surface is a knot invariant. It turns out that every calabi manifold that appears in this way is, in fact, a distinct mirror of the blown-up confold. And so one gets not just a single mirror, as we are used to, but, in fact, infinitely many mirrors, one for each knot in S3. And this is a consequence of a generalization of Strominger, Yao, and Yao, Wafa, uh, and, sorry, Wafa is not, <laughs> in lots of places in this story, but not everywhere. <laughs> Uh, Selma J. Al Zaslav, um, view of mirror symmetry, uh, applied to local Calabi Al manifolds. So, for the rest of this talk, I'll explain the origin of these statements, what they mean for knot theory and for mirror symmetry, and also how this connects to some other recent work. Okay, so Selma J. Al and Zaslav uh, conjecture that. Every compact Calabi Yau manifold, X, with a mirror Y, admits a family of special Lagrangian T3s such that um, the disk instanton corrected moduli space of a D3 brain wrapping the T3 fiber um, is, is the mirror Calabi Yau. So, in this way, the moduli space of a D0 brain probing the mirror and the D3 brain on the original space are the same. So this way, for a mirror pair of calabi manifolds x and y, the mirror arises as a quantum-corrected geometry of x as seen by a probe D3 brain. Um, mirror symmetry is best, it, I think it's fair to say that it's best understood for local calabi manifolds, um, where you can essentially prove it to all genera. Um, it is known that, um, from math that, in this case, in fact, the, uh, the special Lagrangian T3 fibration does not exist. So 
the T3 fiber that Strominger, Yao, and Zaslav had in mind uh, doesn't exist in this case. Instead, what happens is that the mirror is obtained by considering a special Lagrangian of topology R2 times S1. There's only one compact circle in a D3 ring. So we take type 2B on, a, on, on this local Calabi LX with a D3 brain on a Lagrangian of this topology. And then the moduli space of the brain is, in fact, one uh, complex dimensional. Um, for any toric Calabi LX, the mirror turns out to be uh, given uh, in this form. It's a hypersurface equation like this. And a mirror to a D3 brain wrapping R2 times S1 in this geometry is a D2 brain in this mirror, in the original geometry, is a D2 brain in the mirror. Uh, and it wraps a curve given by setting V is equal to 0 here and choosing a point on the Riemann surface. You set V is equal to 0, the left hand side vanishes, and you still have to choose a point on the Riemann surface given by this. So this Riemann surface is the classical moduli space of a D2 brain um, on Y, and the disk instant on corrected moduli space of a D3 brain on the original Calabria X. Now, in this case, if you were to find more than one Lagrangian of topology R2 times S1, you would get more than one mirror, as the different brains would generically see the geometry of X differently. Um, now, in general, in trying to verify this, one is faced with two hard technical problems. One is finding special Lagrangian. The second one is summing up disk instant on corrections to the moduli space. Now, it turns out that um, string duality, namely large end duality, comes to uh, aid you in this, in, this, in this problem, at least for the special case when the Calabiao, original Calabiao, is a conifold, resolved conifold. Um, now, we are familiar with the statement that large end duality relates the resolved and the deformed conifold. This has been studied on a number of different contexts. And the details depend on the setting. The setting that we will need is that of the uh, A-model topological string. So as Kumar reviewed, um, um, Gopakumar and, and, and Vapa conjectured in 98 that large end duality relates uh, A-model topological string on the deformed conifold with n dbrains on the S3, and on the A model topological string on the resolved conifold with a P1 whose size is set by the Toft coupling. And moreover, they said that the duality is a geometric transition that, um, where you shrink the S3 and grow the P1. Now, before the transition on the deformed conifold, for every knot in S3, you get a Lagrangian of topology of R2 times S1 in a very simple way. You simply take uh, the Lagrangian to intersect the S3 along the knot and extend in two directions normal to the S3. This way, the, the, S, the, the, the S1 is the knot itself. Um, now, geometric transition or uh, large end duality will relate this uh, to a Lagrangian after the transition of the same topology. And so, in fact, I'll denote it by the same letter. Oops. Thus, for each knot in S3, large end duality gives you a Lagrangian of the topology we need on the resolved conical. Now, it turns out um, the duality also allows you to sum up disk instant on corrections to the modular space of the probe brain and thus find a mirror as a picture of the geometry from the perspective of this brain. Um, the reason that's doable is relation of uh, the A-model topological string on this deformed conifold uh, to s 2 entrance theory on S3. And um, come and review this, but um, just to remind you, the way this comes about is as follows. A model topological string is counting holomorphic maps from Riemann surfaces into Calabiao. In this geometry of the deformed conifold, all such maps are degenerate. There are no finite size holomorphic maps, finite area holomorphic maps. 
And so, what do they degenerate to? Well, Witten showed in 93 that they degenerate, in fact, to Feynman graphs of S theory and Trans-Simons theory on S3. If you have n D-brains in the full string theory on S3, um, uh, yeah, you get S3 and Trans-Simons theory on S3. And moreover, it's clear that the string coupling on the topological string side is the same as the effective Trans-Simons coupling after the transition. So these two theories are really the same. The string field theory is Trans-Simons theory, ordinary Trans-Simons theory. Now, um, introducing in the Calabial additional Lagrangian brains associated to the knot corresponds to simply studying Trans-Simons theory with Wilson loops uh, on the knot. That was shown by Guri and Vapa in 1999. And in fact, if you, in this deformed conical geometry, ask what is the partition function of a single brain on this Lagrangian, that answer is computable completely from Trans-Simons theory um, as some combination of Wilson loop expectation values um, uh, of the knot that, uh, that, uh, that one starts with, where one, sum, where one has to consider all symmetric representations of SUN, and sum them up in this way. So x here that arises uh, is the modulus of the brain, the one, the one modulus that the brain has, and it's related to the holonomy of the gauge field on the brain around the S1. And so, um, now, large and duality will relate this partition function to the partition function of the brains after the transition. And the large and duality um, in this statement, in this, con in this context, uh, is a very simple statement, namely that the partition function of a computer using Trans-Simons theory is the same before the transition, that uh, relates to the theory before the transition, is exactly the same as the partition function after the transition. You just have to rewrite it in terms of the fixed hoof coupling and G-string. And then moreover, the disk amplitude is simply the classical piece of this at fixed hoof coupling. So the disk partition function determines the quantum moduli space of the probe brain, as it turns out, uh, as the Riemann surface, such that um, for every point on the Riemann surface, on this Riemann surface, with coordinates x and p, uh, these are related to the disk partition function in the following way. This is known since 2001. Um, now, the generalized SYZ conjecture would relate the quantum moduli space of the probe D3 brain, which we just uh, computed using large and duality, uh, to the classical moduli space of a D2 brain in the mirror. And the mirror brain um, wraps a curve, which is given by setting say v is equal to zero in this equation, and choosing a point on this Riemann surface. So in this way, you get a mirror of the result conical, one for each knot in S3, as simply the picture of the geometry of x as seen by this probe brain, probe D3 brain, associated to the knot. Now, let me give you some examples. Uh, the simplest example of this is just to take the simplest knot, well, that's uh, the unknot. And in this case, what you get is the canonical mirror of the conifold, derived, for example, by Hori and Waffa uh, in 2000 using completely different methods. So this parameter Q here is just e to the minus t and t size of the, of the S2 in the result conifold. It becomes a complex structure parameter in the mirror. Now, if you take a more complicated knot, you'll get a more complicated answer. So the next more complicated knot, in some sense, is a trefoil. And in this case, the mirror, it still depends on just one complex structure parameter, but in this case, it's a genus one Riemann surface. It's more complicated. For the figure eight knot, you can do this for any knot, but for, so for example, for the figure eight knot, you'd get a genus two Riemann surface. Um, the Calabria would be built on this Riemann surface. Of course, the, the, the whole mirror is three complex dimensional. But this Riemann surface is the guts of it. Okay. So, one consequence of this generalized mirror conjecture is that um, closed topological string on all of these is exactly the same as that of the conifold. One can prove, uh, so this is, this is a prediction. One can prove that this is indeed the case if you just study genus zero topological string amplitudes for infinite class of torus knots. Some evidence. 
Now, um, the way we found these new mirrors is very roundabout here. It went through large end dualities, uh, which aided us in solving some technical problems. In principle, you could ask, OK, now that you found these Lagrangians, let me just do a direct computation of summing up these instant corrections and, um, um, to, the, to the modular space of the problem. This, in fact, was done by a mathematician, uh, Lenny Yang, in uh, 2004, motivated by the work on geometric transitions of Gopakumar, uh, Gopakumar and Vafa, and Aguri and Vafa. And what he used is um, a new idea of, in terms of counting holomorphic curves. Um, the closing version of this program has been pioneered by um, Elias Berg and um, Givenchall. And the open string version was developed by Lenny. And he called it a not contact homology. Um, now, in all cases that we checked, the curves that arise from not contact homology are, in fact, the same as the ones that you would obtain from large end transformers theory. So you can view this as a direct, direct test of large end if you want. OK, so that's about mirror symmetry. Now, what about not theory? The consequences for not theory are quite dramatic, in fact. So far, we use transformers theory in, um, as just a tool. But let's not do that. Let's think about what this means for transformers theory. What it means is this, that uh, if you take SUN transformers theory on S3 with the knot, then the combination of large end duality and mirror symmetry relates this to a topological B model on the mirror y, uh, y sub k plus a mirror D brain. So using this combination of two dualities, large end duality to sum up planar graphs, and mirror symmetry to sum up alpha prime corrections, you've translated a problem of computing arbitrary knot invariance of SUN transformers theory with the knot to a computation of a topo uh, in a topological B model on the mirror with appropriate brains. More precisely, here I studied only one brain, but to get arbitrary transformers invariance with the knot uh, K, you need to study mirror not just with a single brain, but with arbitrary many of them. But it's still the same calabi geometry. <clears throat> so this means that um, topological string gives you a new knot invariant, the mirror calabi itself. And by combination of these two dualities, the larger and duality and mirror symmetry, this should be as good at distinguishing knots as the SUN transformers theory. This is simply because quantization of topological string adds no new data to this problem. Well, more precisely, um, you have to have a well-defined quantum theory to begin with. And to do that, you need a calabi -Yau. You need to specify the position of the mirror brain. You have lots of choices of, of the point on the Riemann surface where the mirror brain is. You have to choose the right one, which was implicit in everything that I've done so far. And this is essentially given, given to you. And moreover, you need to choose a, uh, make a choice of periods on the Riemann surface. This is related to the homomorphic anomaly of a topological string. And I'm not explaining this in detail, but there is more data. There is pot a potential subtly which um, is related to the fact that Riemann surfaces that you get in this way are actually all singular, except in the case of the unknot. And one might have to pick a resolution of singularities to um, define the quantum theory properly. However, presumably, since this didn't affect the disk amplitude, it's not an issue. Now, um, instead of studying um, topological string amplitudes, which would give you transformers invariants. One can also study um, so-called categorified or homological knot invariants from the mirror. And um, as Gukov, Schwartz, and Waffa explained in 2004, that gets related to studying uh, spaces of BPS states that contribute to the topological string partition function. Now, one should be able to determine the BPS spectrum from the calabi plus a finite amount of data. So, um, in some sense, you don't expect categorification to give you new information. Um, the cat categorified knot invariance was studied in this context recently in a very nice work by uh, Fuji, Gukov, and Sulkowski, just very recently. 
Um, okay. Now, so far we've studied only knots. Um, a natural thing that might puzzle is how do links fit in this picture. Um, the reason that's a puzzle is that um, a link consists of some number of knot components corresponding to um, a number of um, different Lagrangians of topology R2 times S1. And so, naively, for a link with n knot components, uh, you generally get n different curves associated to these individual knots. Or if you want, the moduli space is n dimensional. So, how do you get, how do you relate this to a single color IBR? And um, this is something we've studied in this, in, uh, in this paper to appear with, uh, with Tobias and Lenny. And the answer is very beautiful. So, suppose you, you, you consider a link with some n different, uh, some n knot components. You get n different probes of the geometry, simply because the link involved n knots. And so, you can take the miracle IBL to be one associated to any one of the knot components, say this blue one. And you will get a picture of the mirror geometry as seen by that probe brain. And then the other brains that are associated with other uh, knot components of the link are represented as not necessarily single points, generally collections of points um, moving together on the human surface. So their description is more complicated in the geometry suited to the blue knot. And so it goes for every single knot component. So this gives you n different ways to describe the same physics from perspective of any one of the components. Um, a relation between knots um, and uh, SE2 transimus theory or SL2C transimus theory and topological strings and Riemann surfaces has been proposed previously in a beautiful work by, um, by Diagraf and Fuji in 2009 which stimulated a lot of other work. And um, what we did here was, our, our, this work arose from an attempt to, under, to, 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 under, to understand why, why these remarkable statements are true. And um, so this story arises here as a special case where you take n is equal to 2, and you study um, the p1 of size 2 in 2 times g string. Um, and the fact that, uh, the story worked out here works so remarkably well that what could actually recover from the geometries of the Riemann surface is not invariant. Um, is also this gives some evidence to the fact that the story should be true more general in this context that we are proposing. Mirror symmetry um, and large end duality for torus knots has been studied before, also in a very nice paper by Br uh, Brini, Einard, and Marino. In their case, they get slightly different Riemann surfaces related to the fact that. Um, a single brain is actually represented by more than one point on the Riemann surface, and this is probably related to the story we met in, in the context of links. So they just got to give a different description. But um, morally, the ideas they use are actually the same and very beautiful. So um, now, historically, the search for good knot invariants came from quantum physics. And of course, we've learned a tremendous amount from Trinsimus theory. Um, However, what we are proposing here is that if your intent is just to distinguish knots, then one should consider going back to classical physics. So given a classical Calabria associated to the knot, one gains no new information once there is sufficient data to define the quantum theory. So just to summarize, I described here two uh, admittedly very bold conjectures. They come from combining generalized SYZ mirror symmetry and large end duality. One is that, in fact, for, I didn't discuss this here, but for an arbitrary toric IBL, you should have an infinite ambiguity as to what the mirror is, one for each knot in S3. This is, this is a sort of immediate consequence of what we, what we talked about so far. Secondly, that if you take X to be a result conical, the mirror geometry gives you, not, gives you an, an invariant of knots in S3, and um, they should, uh, um, Quantization of topological, this should give you this classical geometry, should give you uh, perhaps leads to a perfect knot invariant, the one people have been searching for for two centuries. Of course, this is, you know, it's, I think there's a, there's a lot of nice physics here, which in any rate will teach us at least about mirror, what, what, what it is, uh, what mirror symmetry is, and give us, gives us a new perspective to, um, um, to think about knot theory. Um, so, whether or not it's true, I think it's a, um, there's a lot of interesting things to think about here. So, thank you. Thank you.
there questions or comments? Ed, no? Um, Yoshi? No. Okay. Then uh, let's. Oh, yeah. Okay, please. So, uh, going back to the beginning, you had a. I can't talk, sorry. I'll have to talk to you later. Are there any other questions? If not, then let's. There's thank a question Mina. down there. Oh, I didn't see. Please. So there's an infinite family of possible mirrors. How do, do you know how this uh, ambiguity shows up in the uh, world sheet? And if you, and so is the statement that if you imagine trying to compactify, there would still be a unique mirror? Or? Well, for the closed ring, yes. the world sheet theory is the same, right? It should be the same for all of them. It's not manifestly the same, the same way in the conventional view of mirror symmetry, it's not manifestly true, right? That, um, that string theory built on one Calabria and its mirror are the same, but um, the closed string theory should be identically the same. And then for all different deep brains, they just, they get permuted in the different descriptions, but you know, string theory on any one of them should give you a complete description of the whole space of deep brains and, you know, on Calabria. It's just a different description from perspective of different brains. The classical geometry starts out as a different description from perspective of different brains.